Hello students, today we will be learning about the composition, structure and the nutritive value of fleshy foods which includes meat, fish. Now, I will be starting with meat. Commonly, meat is defined as those animal tissues that are suitable for use as food obtained from warm blooded four legged animals. The animals commonly raised for meat worldwide are cattle, sheep, pig and poultry which is dominated by chicken. Now, other mammalian species are also used as food in various parts of the world according to the culture and availability. Meat also includes the glands and organs of these animals. The other products which are manufactured from meat which include the sausage casings, the fat which is the lard, the gelatin and others are included in this definition. Meat is considered as a source of high quality proteins. Now, red meat consists of meat, goat meat, pork, beef and rabbit meat. Now, white meat is better which comes from poultry mostly to red meat for health reasons. Now, we shall look at the structure of meat. Now, meat can be divided into three distinct muscle types, skeletal muscle, the smooth muscle and the cardiac muscle. Now, skeletal muscle constitute the bulk which is about 35 to 65 percent of the carcass weight of the meat and organs of the muscular system that are attached directly or indirectly to the bones. Now, smooth muscle is the muscle that makes up the digestive tract and the heart is composed of the cardiac muscle. Now, we shall just look at the details of each muscle fiber. Now, it is as I said the majority of the muscles are the skeletal muscles. So, these skeletal muscles are the most important of the three types and these muscles felicitate the movement or give support to the body. The smallest independent cellular unit of mature skeletal muscle are called as muscle fibers and skeletal muscles are a very complex contractile system made up of cylindrical multinucleated muscle fibers of varying lengths surrounded by a layer of connective tissue which is known as the endomysium. Now, bundles of these muscle fibers are enclosed in a sheath of connective tissue known as the perimysium while the entire muscle is surrounded by a denser connective tissue sheath which is called as the epimysium. Now, the structural complexity of meat can be organized as follows. First, the muscle which is made up of bundles of muscles and muscle fiber which is composed again of myofibril which is the minutest part of the muscles and also called as the myofilament. So, each muscle fiber contains hundreds of myofibrils. Meat in an animal's body is supported by bones and tendons which are held together by the fibrous connective tissue. Now, merged into a large mass, the tendon at the terminus of each muscle is anchored to the skeleton. Now, veins and arteries as well as larger nerves are inside the perimysium while the capillaries and the smaller nerves are in the endomysium. Now, the composition of meat varies with the species of the animal source, the species variations due to breed, age and sex diet and exercise conditions also. Now, it contains two types of proteins called as intercellular protoplasmic proteins. They are also known as contractile proteins and they form the majority of the proteins between 65 to 90 percent. Then we have the structural proteins uh, which form about 10 to 17 percent which are mostly made up of collagen and elastin. Now, collagen is the most abundant protein in the animal body. It is abundantly found in tendons, skin, bone, 
the vascular system of animal and the connective tissue sheaths which surround the muscle. Now, collagen contributes to the toughness in, in the chewing of meat because it is found in higher amounts in the older animals than those of the younger animals and therefore, it is important in determining the toughness of the meat. Collagen fibers shrink in hot water and are converted to gelatin. This change is significant in the tenderization of meat cuts with high connective tissue content. Now, elastin this is tougher than collagen and is a constituent of ligaments and tendons. Now, elastin has the elastic properties compared to collagen. Elastic properties are necessary in the muscles and the tissues of the neck, the abdominal or intestinal wall and the arterial system. No change occurs in elastin when it is cooked. Therefore, it is its content is not of so much importance from the point of view of cooking methods. Now, intercellular protoplasmic proteins or contractile proteins, these are chiefly composed of myosin, which is the major protein, actin, then uh, tropomyosin and troponin, which are found in small quantities. As you can see from the table which is being shown to you, we have compared the various protein content, the percentage of water and the fat content of various fleshy foods in that and as you can see water is the single largest component of muscle by weight. Now, changes in the amount of water present and the extent to which it is bound by the muscle component is considered to be influencing the tenderness, the texture and juiciness of meat as well as the yield of cooked meat. Now, therefore, water plays an important role in the tenderness and the juiciness of meat. Carbohydrates. The carbohydrates found in meat are mostly glycogen and glucose. Now, protein meat contains just 15 to 20 percent of protein, but this protein is of excellent nutritive value and the lean meat contains when the fat is removed 20 to 22 percent of protein. Of the total nitrogen content of meat, 95 percent is protein and 5 percent is smaller peptides and amino acids. The amino acid makeup of meat protein is very good for the maintenance and growth of body tissues or human tissues. The biological value of meat protein is better than vegetable protein, but amongst all the fleshy foods, it is the fish protein which has higher biological value when compared to meat protein. Now, the fat. The fat content of meat varies as you can see from the table between 5 to 40 percent and the highest amount of fat as uh, you can see is from the pork. So, it has the fat content depends upon the breed of the animal and when the animal is well fed, the way the fat gets deposited in the body varies. For example, when the animal is well fed, fat deposits subcutaneously as a protective layer around the organs. Then it accumulates around and in between the muscle fibers. Finally, fat penetrates between the muscle fiber bundles and this is known as marbling. And marbling is highly desirable with some meat like beef because the amount of fat and consequently the water holding capacity of meat is greatly influenced by the amount of marbling which affects the juiciness of the beef. Meat fats are rich so sources of saturated fatty acids and the cholesterol content of meat is very high which is about 75 milligrams per 100 grams. Now, lean meat is healthy as it has a higher proportion of unsaturated fatty acids. Minerals, the mineral elements occur 
either as separate ions or in a variety of compounds within the muscles. Now, few of the important minerals which are found in meat include calcium, magnesium which are the essential components of the uh, contraction and rela relaxation cycle. Iron is a part of the red pigment and so it influences the color. Zinc is found in one of the enzymes. Meat is a good source of iron and phosphorus. Meat also contains sodium and potassium. Liver is an excellent source of iron. Now, coming to vitamins. Uh, meat is an excellent source of some of the vitamins of the B complex and liver is one of the richest sources of vitamin B12, vitamin A and iron. Now, enzymes. Meat contains protein hydrolyzing enzymes which are called as cathepsins and these enzymes are responsible for hydrolyzing the protein when the meat is marinated and they break down the complex protein molecules. Therefore, they help in the tenderization of meat. Now, pigments, the color of the meat is primarily due to myoglobin and hemoglobin. Meat cured with nitrates remains pink as nitric oxide myoglobin is a highly stable compound. Hemoglobin also contributes to the color of meat to some extent. Now, flavor compounds, we all know we like meat because of the flavor it emanates when it is cooked and this makes meat very, very desirable. So, the flavor of the meat is a complex sensation, much of it is due to water soluble substances such as ionocenic acid, hypoxanthin which is derived from ATP, glycopeptides and amino acids such as glutamic acid. Meat with very little fat tastes insipid. The fourth module under fleshy foods is fish and seafood. Now, let us see what it is all about. Now, ed edible fish are mostly classified as either fin fish or shellfish. Now, fish, as you all know, are aquatic vertebrates with fins for swimming and gills for breathing. Shellfish are aquatic invertebrates with shells or carapaces. Now, fish is classified basically on various categories. Now, it is depending on where they are found. For example, freshwater fish and marine fish or saltwater fish. Now, physical shape of the fish, is it round fish or flat and the other one happens to be the round fish, one is the flat fish. Then depending upon the fat content or the flesh type, we have the white fish or the oily fish. Now, let us see what freshwater fish we are talking about. Now, the freshwater fish lives mostly in fresh water with a salinity of less than 0 0.5 percent and nearly 41 percent percent of the species of fish are found in fresh water. Now, example salmon, tilapia and what we call carp. There are many others, but I have just given the pictures of three. Now, salt water fish or marine fish spend their entire lives in oceanic water and example the white pomfret, the mackerel and surmai. These are the three examples again I have given you. Now, we have the second category of the major fish that is the shellfish. Now, the shellfish can be classified as mollusk and crustaceans. Now, mollusks have harder outer shells and no legs and small unsegmented bodies and no internal skeleton. Now, they include oysters, clams, scallops and muscles. There are, there is a picture full of all these. Now, then comes the crustaceans. They have a hard outer shell and legs or jointed appendages. They are found in both fresh and salt water. They breathe through gills. For example, crayfish, 
crab, lobster, prawns and shrimp. These are what we call the uh, crustaceans. Now let us look at the structure. First, the round fish. This includes both salt water and fresh water varieties. They have fins and internal bone structures. They have eyes on both sides of their heads. Bodies are truly round, oval or compressed. Now I have given a picture of the round fish. You can study in detail. Then comes the structure of the flat fish. These flat fish is found in ocean waters. They have asymmetrical and compressed bodies. They swim in a horizontal position and have both eyes on top of their heads. These are the bottom dwellers that is they dwell in the bottom of the waters in which they are found and top of their bodies is dark and the bottom is lighter in color. And this is the example of the structure of the flat fish. Now let us look at their body parts and their uses. Eyes, fish are visual predators. That means they follow everything with their eyes. Many nocturnal fish have large eyes to help them feed at night. Now operculum is the bony flap that covers the fish gills. Now lateral line runs along the sides of the fish's body and it is used as a sensory organ by the fish. Now fins are used for swimming and sometimes for protection. Some fins are paired and others are unpaired. Fins are me most bony uh, fish are flexible and supported by visible spines and rays. Tail, the shape of the tail can be an indicator of how fast fish usually swims. Now gills, as we know, the oxygen enters the bloodstream through the gills and carbon dioxide diffuses out of the gills, which are feathery structures found along the sides of the head of the fish. Skin, the skin of the most bony fish is covered with bony scales that look like shingles on a roof. Bony fish scales are waterproof and help protect the fish. The composition and nutritional value of fish. Fish and seafood should form a major part of any healthy diet. It is an excellent source of protein and a vital source of essential fatty acids and contains a wide variety of vitamins and minerals. It is also low in calories which makes it perfect for any weight loss eating plan. Now commonly consumed fish are carp, rohu, surmai, marel, mackerel, pomfret, salmon, tuna, prawns, sole, bombay duck etc. The composition of fish varies. Fish are not good source of energy because they are not good source of carbohydrates and fats. Now carbohydrates, the shellfish has less fat and more carbohydrates than fin fish. Like meat, fish contain some glycogen in muscle tissue. In the live fish, glycogen is the main source of stored energy and oysters are notable for their high content of glycogen. On an average, 2 to 3 percent of glycogen is found in the oysters. Now white fish such as cod, haddock, plaice and sole contains about 100 calories for every 100 grams while oily fish such as herring, mackerel, salmon, sardines contain about 130 to 240 calories per 100 grams. Now protein, one of the most important components of fish. Fish is an excellent source of protein due to its quality and quantity. They contain around 20% protein and the biological value of fish protein is around 80 and fish is rich in lysine and methionine, two very essential amino acids and therefore it has supplementary value with cereals and pulses. Now fat, now fish contains less amount of fat compared to meat and poultry and 
The lipid content of both fish and prawns is very low and varies with a very narrow range of 1 to 2.8 percent. Now, crab small contains nearly 10 percent fat and the fish variety called wanjaram contains 4 percent fat. Fish contain mostly saturated fatty acid uh, 40 percent, monounsaturated fatty acids 25 percent and polyunsaturated fatty acids which range between 3 to 25 percent. Polyunsaturated fatty acids in fish are mostly the omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids which are very very essential to keep your heart healthy and therefore fat uh, fish are considered to be the high sources of these omega 3 fatty acids. Now minerals, fish is rich in calcium particularly small fish when it is eaten with bones. Now marine fish or ocean fish are good source of iodine which is essential for the body, selenium and also fluoride. Selenium is a powerful antioxidant. Now oysters are good sources of copper and iron. Small fishes are among the nature's richest sources of zinc and the bioavailability of iron and zinc is higher than the plant food. Coming to the vitamins, seafood contains significant amounts of vitamin B12, especially shellfish and fish liver oils are excellent source of fat soluble vitamins, especially all the fat soluble vitamins and rohu contains vitamin C. Fish are good sources of niacin and also vitamin D. Seafoods contain significant amounts of vitamin B12, especially the shellfish. Now, fish protein concentrate, it is a new uh, product uh, which has been arrived at after a lot of research and it is the name given to the edible fish product which is suitable for human consumption which is prepared from fresh fish. The fish protein concentrate, an essential uh, odorless powder is very high in protein that is it provides about 70 to 80 percent protein with good amount of lysine. It has high biological value and it is light in color. It is free from grittiness and can be incorporated at a level of 3 to 10 percent in a variety of dishes to supplement the daily diets with high quality proteins. Now, as you can see nutritive value of fish per 100 grams, it given for various varieties of fishes which includes the various minerals also. So, you need to study this table much in detail. Now, to conclude uh, let me just sum up the whole thing that the today we have studied meat and fish together in the uh, chapter of fleshy foods and as you can see that both meat and fish are an excellent source of protein with a high biological value in the human diet. But when compared to the fat content whereas in red meat we have a high percentage of saturated fatty acids. On the other hand the fish and the seafood which include the crustaceans, the mollusk etc. a part of the shellfish there the fat content is very low and whatever fat is found is highly unsaturated totally made up of omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids which is considered to be an excellent supplement for lowering the various cholesterol levels which includes the total cholesterol as well as the LDL cholesterol and in fact uh, the fish are also fish liver oils are also very good sources of fat soluble vitamins especially uh, vitamin E, K, D etc. and concentrates of fish liver oils are available in the market in the form of capsules. So, both these are an excellent source of protein with a high biological value which can help us to supplement the protein content from the cereal based diet. 
Thank you students uh, for listening so patiently and going through the lesson and I hope you learn very very important facts which I have covered today and have a good day.